And you know what happens? We have communion, so I'd like to welcome and ask each and every one of you to go ahead and prepare your elements because we'll be sharing that um, later on in the in the service. But for now, allow me to pray so that we can call the music team so that they may lead us in this uh, section of worshiping the Lord through music. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful day that you've given unto us. I pray, Lord, even as we sing, as we give, as we listen to your word, as we share in communion, O oh Lord, that you will be with us and that you will bless us. I thank you because, Lord, you are faithful and you are with us. And, Lord, I pray that today will be a wonderful day in your presence. I thank you and I worship you, for it is in Jesus' name I pray and believe. And every child say... Amen. So now, guys, it's time to rise up. Yes, so that we may join the music team as they lead us in worshiping the Lord through music.
we bless you, Lord. Glory is to you, our God Almighty. Father, you are great. You are Lord. We bless you, Lord. Great is your faithfulness, Jesus. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. We bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. You are holy, Lord. Lamb of God, you are worthy. Lamb of God, you are holy to receive glory, honor, and strength. And so, Lord, we bless you, Lord, with our voices, with our songs of praise.
Jesus.
Kids, I believe you've jumped, you've clapped, you've knelt, you've prayed, you have thoroughly worshipped the Lord through music, and now it is time for us to get into our word for today. And today, being a new month, you know, we have begun a new sermon series, and the sermon series is called. <laughs> I thought you knew, but the sermon series is called Draw the line like take a pencil with a ruler draw a line okay and what are we talking about about drawing the line do you know um when we were little kids um and uh okay you know boys okay i used to be a young boy and uh you enter into an argument with someone and uh you have gotten so angry to the point whereby uh, you just want to fight with them. I don't know if you guys do that nowadays, but this is what friends would do. Um, if you're serious about fighting, they would separate you and then they would draw a line on the sand. And then they would say, the one who is serious about fighting the other person, cross the line. But if you're not, stay. You stay on your side and you stay on your other side and find a way of agreeing or finding peace. But no one should cross that line. If you cross that line, that means you are ready for war. You are ready to fight. Okay. That was uh, us when we were boys. I don't know what you guys do. But so that's part of drawing the line. That's one way of drawing the line. The line that we are talking about here is, do you know like when you get your exercise book? Okay. Or even your textbook. Do you realize that um there is usually a line on the left hand side of the exercise book or on your book that um you cannot write past like that line there it's usually called a margin have you ever seen that in your book and even when you're on your exercise book or even on your exercise book they are always there even on printed book like this is a bible I don't know if you'll be able to see, but you see, there is like a clear line where the handwriting or the typing cannot be done. Even, even in the inside, there, there, there are very clear margins on how this thing has been printed. You see? And today we are talking about your life and drawing margins or drawing those lines or, yes, drawing those so that you live a life not just doing things but doing the important things you know there are, you are you can live your life just doing things you're just busy huh mara you are playing football a little bit later you are busy gaming uh, a little bit later you're talking to your friends a little bit later uh, you are sleeping or simply doing nothing but you find yourself you're just doing things instead of doing the important things and it, it and the interesting thing is that that's what we've been doing we see people doing it we see sometimes our parents doing it so since people are doing this then i might as well do it but what we are saying in this sermon series is that we need to come to the point whereby we draw the line we make clear lines and say this is what i will not be doing you come to the point whereby you're looking is this really important do i have to do this and if it is something that you don't have to do then you don't have, then you don't then you you don't do okay so you draw a margin so that 
you do the things that are important because right now I, I know you guys are extremely busy there are things that you must do you're going to school so you need to study hard so that you get to pass your exams uh, you are at home uh, even at home you need also to study uh, you need to obey your parents you need to help in the house so there are many things that you guys are doing uh, you you live with your friends you need to keep in touch with them you know uh, and 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 talk to them and even sometimes play with them that, that those are those are important things so if you in life you might find you're doing so many things that you do not have time to do the most important let me give an example okay you know you're a student okay you go to school you go to school to study and learn okay so that you become a better Kenyan citizen but then you go to school and you have friends you are in class when you are in class you're supposed to be learning hearing what the teacher is saying but then you are busy making noise okay or even worse you are thinking about how you are going to or to talk to your friend during break time about that movie you watch or that series you watch or that cartoon or that new game that you played on the phone okay online so your mind is not even in school is not even at work uh, not even at um in in the classroom or what your teacher is teaching okay and you end up not listening you end up not um understanding what the teacher is teaching and when exams come guess what you will fail okay so if we are not careful to know that i'm in class it's time to listen to what the teacher is saying take notes ask question you know put your mind in class so that you understand what the teacher is teaching because it is important and that will cause you not only to just pass exams but be the person that god wants you to be you end up failing you see and god did not create you a failure god created you as a masterpiece and he knows if you if you are careful to do the things that you are supposed to be doing at the time that you're supposed to be doing you will prosper you will excel but most of us find ourselves um being stressed uh, you have no time to do things simply because you are doing things that are not important now let me let me let me let, just the thing about class again huh? you are not listening to the teacher in class two months down the line the teacher tells you that hey you're going to have exams and you'll be tested on the things that you are taught in um, for the last two for the last two months you know the the those lessons that you're not paying attention guess what you are going to be stressed you will not have time to even think you know you will be you would want to read all day and all night you know and and i believe that's what all kenyans do it's 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 the thing that uh um kenyan students are famously known for reading last minute okay you 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 get so stressed that you don't have time to talk to your friends you don't have time to obey your parents you have got no time to do chores and the reason why that happened is because you are not doing the things that you are supposed to be doing when you are supposed to be doing i'm saying this with such pain because i did it and i regret doing it and i do not want you guys to live the life that i lived you know i want you guys to be a better kenyan student right this is what the bible says in the book of romans chapter 12 verse 1 and i know it it says do not be conformed to the patterns of this world but be re but he, be ye renewed by the renewal of your mind so that you may know that which is the good perfect will of god you see we've been doing things the way people have been doing things the way this world have been doing things the way kenyans are doing things but god is calling us to change what we think and how we do things so that you get to know that which is the good and perfect will of god and you know the will of god is that you prosper 
that you have time you are know that you're not all the time stressed or rushing around because you didn't do something on time imagine um some of you you know it's a school week let's say it's sunday okay you go out play with friends you end up um sleeping very late or even uh you've been told to go to sleep and because you have a phone you decide hey i think i'm going to uh either watch a movie or you decide i'm going to play a game just before i sleep just one hour before i sleep you see you're supposed to sleep at eight and you say ah i think i can play a game and sleep at around nine but because the game is going to get interesting hmm, you end up sleeping at midnight and you have to i know most of you wake up at 4 a.m to go to school if you're lucky you wake up at six you need to and you know that you need to sleep god's will is that you sleep for eight hours and your parents are wise enough to tell you to go to sleep at eight so that by 10 a.m when you are being woken up you'd have slept for eight hours but you being a kamujuaji you decide you're going to play games and you end up sleeping at midnight how many hours of sleep do you have only four you wake up feeling very groggy you know you 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 can't even think straight you're being told to you can't even uh, your mom has already uh, ironed your shirt ironed your ironed your uniform uh, she, has, she has put socks aside for you to wear but you're so tired that you can't even see your socks when you ask where your shoes you just go like mm, because you're still half asleep you know you're just walking around your eyes are open, but your mind is fully asleep. That is not God's will for you. God's will is perfect. So that when you sleep for eight hours, you wake up when you are fresh, when you are ready to go to school, when you are strong, you know, and, and you are not and you and, and you're not stressed. But some of you, because of the way you live life, like the way everyone else lives this life in this world, you are so stressed. You see? Now, the reason why we are doing this sermon series is to get you to the point whereby you know what is important. Because God wants you to live a life that is productive. God wants you to live a life that is not full of stress, that is not full of, uh, of, 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 of no rest. You see, you're always doing things... Uh, last minute to the point whereby you can't even rest huh? you are you're always running around you're so busy to the point whereby you do not have time to just sit down and just breathe you know you guys live in mombasa when was the last time you guys went to the beach to just go swim and have fun with friends unless dad or mom forces you to go or your cousin from nairobi comes and uh, you are forced to go to the beach, you know? Uh, but most of the time, you don't have time because you are busy doing things uh, that are not important to the point whereby when important things are calling uh, or you are supposed to do the important things, you are so stressed, you have no time, okay? Now, um, we need to keep this in mind, okay? That... When we keep doing and living like everyone else, we will keep receiving and getting what everyone else is receiving and getting. That's why when you go to school, when you tell somebody, oh, I am so stressed, I am feeling so sleepy, everyone else is feeling so sleepy. When exams are around the corner is when everyone else is busy studying. They do not even have time to talk to you. They have time... Uh, during class to talk to you but now it is exam time no one has got time to talk to you or even help you with that problem that you have that's the reason why okay and we are calling to live with our margins where you draw the line you come to the point and say i'm in class i'm going to listen to the teacher and i will ask questions where i do not understand so that by this by the end of this lesson whatever the teacher is teaching I will catch you see the good thing about 
as I said, God, God's plans, God's perfect will is that you get to do the important things. If it is that story, if it is that movie you want to share, you can talk to your friend during break time. That's a good time to discuss whatever it is that you want to discuss. If it is make noise or update each other on what is going on in your life, break time is the perfect time or even during lunch time. Not in class. The Bible says that there is a time for everything. You see, so it is, it is good to do things at the right time. When you do things at the right time, you get right things. But some of you, you end up talking in class to the point whereby when you get to break, there's nothing to talk about. You've wasted time in class, not listening to the teacher, and you waste, you waste break time, not being able to talk to your friend, because you've got nothing else to talk about. Okay? So you end up wasting each other's time. So, this is the thing. When we live a life that has got no margins, this is what happens. That when margins decreases, peace decreases and overload increases. It's the same, same thing I'm saying in school. When you're not studying in class, when you're not listening to teacher in class, what happens when exams comes? You are three months. Now you have like a day. You are overloaded with stress. You have no peace. You're wondering whether you, you have enough time to study. Well, you had enough time two months ago. Okay? So draw the line. Know that it is better to study every day than to study on the last day. You'll have more peace studying at the from the beginning of the term than you studying at the last term. Okay? The other thing is this. As margins decreases, strife increases. Have you ever noticed that when, let's say, for example, exams are around the corner, like tomorrow, eh, and you are not studied for your exam. I'm using this one example too. They, I, can, I can use many more examples, but this one, I know this one is common to you. You can't, with your parents, are trying to tell you to do something, you are not even listening. You, don't, you are not even willing to do, and that is disobedience. And what, what happens is that your parents get angry, you get angry, you have, as in there is a lot of strife. You know, there is no peace in the house. Do you want to be living all, like that each and every day? I don't think so. Do you want to live like that each and every time? No, I don't think so. When, do you want uh, every morning you, uh, you have problems with your parents thinking that they hate you? You are thinking that your parents hate you because they wake, up, they wake you up at 4 simply because you slept at 12. 4 a.m. You slept at midnight. Doing what? Playing games. You know, that is the strife that you are talking about. Uh, your mom is angry, you are angry, you get into the car, you can't talk to one another because you are groggy, your mom is groggy. You end up spoiling each other's moods simply because you slept late. Instead of sleeping early, if you'd have slept early, you'd have had a better morning. Okay? Now, because you do not want to live such a life, We need to do some things, make radical change. And where do we, because as I said, God does not want you to live like that. It says this um, from the book of Matthew, chapter 11, from verse 28. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What Jesus is calling you and me to do is take to him those heavy things, those things that are stressing us, you know, and give them to him so that he will give us uh, things that are easy to do. You know, Jesus wants you to work not really work very, very hard to the point whereby you're overloaded with stuff. No, Jesus wants you to work 
and work not smart but good okay if i may put it that way now the reason why the reason why we are doing all these things is because first we do not trust god we do not trust god you are playing that game because your friend told you and because uh that's the thing that probably if you do not discuss about it your friend will your friend your friendship will not last therefore you trust that game to sustain your friendships you see you watch that program that you know the values and morals in it are bad you know you're doing it simply because your friend talked about it so you want to watch so that you've got something to talk about it it um uh, psychologists call it the fear of missing out you since you don't trust god uh in the sense that he's the one who brought that friend to you so therefore you do not have to watch the things that they are watching in order for you to have meaningful re relationship with them uh because you are not trusting god to do that for you then you end up doing things out of your own volition and and strength and knowledge and you end up being in trouble we have to trust god we have to trust jesus you know that even if you lose that friend god is able enough to provide for you a better friend no you don't have to stay with that friend of yours who is always talking to you in class and causing you not to concentrate in your studies you can literally change that that friend and jesus will be able to to give you a friend who is good who, who is good for you um the bible um says that um that we are um the bible says that we are permitted to do everything but not everything is beneficial what does that mean you can do anything you can play games if you want to you can watch movies uh, all night long if you want to you are allowed to do so but the question is is it beneficial to you you have to sit down with yourself and and and, and that's why you're saying you draw the line you know you sit down and, and 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 ask yourself these things that i am doing what is important what is not important and then you prioritize that which is important okay and that which is not important you do away with okay and i this is what if you if you do that with yourself and if you trust god to guide you and to lead you into doing it you will have a much easier life a much uh easier burden to carry you will not have as much stress or as much strife that you've been having in the years that you've been living god wants you to live a good life to live a life that is pleasing doing what is important and not what is urgent or doing what is important and not doing everything else that everyone wants you to be doing because that's not that's not what god created you to be i i, I have a statement here that says that god's purpose is for us to be who he created us to be and not just to do things that we think we need to be doing okay so i want to give us three things three things that we need to do from now going forward number one are you ready we are going to come to jesus jesus has told us to to come to him and he will give us rest he will take our heavy burdens from him so this is what i want us to do on a practical note because jesus is the one who lifts our burdens jesus is the one who gives us peace and the and, and the one and the thing that he gives us is very light you know this is what i want us to do when you wake up in the morning just before you do anything just give thanks to the lord for waking you up and then commit your day to god when just even uh when the bell rings for your next class before you even pack your 
pack your books and return the books and remove the book uh, for the subject that uh, your teacher is coming or maybe you are moving from one class or shifting. Just take like two minutes and say thank you Lord for enabling me to learn the things that I've learned in the class, in, in this class that I am from. And Lord help me to understand the things that you, uh, the teacher is going to teach the second the second in, in the in the class that is coming you see or when you're at home you finish eating give thanks thank you lord for 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 giving me this meal you know i know people i have you people usually pray before they eat okay but the bible says in deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 10 uh, that when you're eaten and you're satisfied you give thanks you see so on a personal note you can give thanks and say Lord, thank you for the meal that you've given me. Let it be of benefit to my body. Thank you. Amen. And even before you move on to do the next thing, you see, just pray. Just say a word. Go to Jesus, you know, and, 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 and just offer thanksgiving and ask for the thing that, you're supposed, that you need for, for, for the next class. That's what I'm saying. Create those margins. It's going to take you maybe one or two or even five minutes. But that five minutes, if you do that every time, ah, you'll find that you are always light. There is no stress, you know, because Jesus is with you. The second thing that you need to do is that we are going to deal with our problems. You see, you know you have a gaming problem. You know that you, uh, you, it, you find it hard to switch off that TV when it is time to go to sleep. You know that you have problem, you know, uh, talking in, in class. Actually, you are noisemaker number one. You're the one who's always disturbing people in class when the teacher is teaching. You have to deal with yourself. You see, you are the, only, you are, you are the one who's always up for punishment. When people are being punished, you are among them and you think it is cool. No, it is not cool. When people are studying, you are busy doing a, a punishment. You know, that adds up. You will not have time to study well. You know, uh, let's say, if you're, for example, you are given punishment to go slash or do something or it is detention. You know, that is time wasted. Uh, you'd have been doing some more important things and why you got into that punishment is because you are talking in class. You have to deal with your problems. The day you deal with your problems, you will realize, ha, huh? okay, since the day I stopped talking in class, I am doing quite well in my exams, okay? Since the day I stopped going for punishments, I find I've got more times to study. Since the day I stopped watching TV late and I've been sleeping early, I've been waking up early in the morning so fresh and ready to go. I'm not groggy. I do not have arguments with my parents in the morning. There's no strife. You see, so you have to deal with your problems or deal with your burdens. Number three, walk with Jesus and learn from him. Okay? You see, Jesus used to nap. He would go preach. Huh? After his preaching, they're moving to, to the next thing. He would sleep in the boat. But what do you do? It's, it's, uh, let's say, for example, it's, for you it is, uh, it is lunchtime. Uh, lunchtime you have got a whole hour. You know it takes about 15 minutes for you to eat. You end up with 45 minutes. What do you do with that 45 minutes? You end up talking with your friend, okay? And because you're to, you did not talk to him on, uh, during break time, you are talking to him uh, during lunch time, you spend the next 45 minutes talking to your friend. Because you've eaten lunch, mm -hmm. the teacher comes in at around 2. By around 2.15, you're already dozing. Why? You did not rest. So this is my cheat sheet. You know, when you have eaten lunch, actually, if there are any stories to, to say to your friend, do that during break time. Come back to class. During lunch time after you've eaten, go take a nap. It's what they call a siesta. You know, in the afternoon. You've eaten, go find a cool place. 
I will go where no one is going to disturb you and just close your eyes for about 30 minutes. Trust me, when you wake up after those 30 minutes, you will not doze in the afternoon classes. You'll be sharp to listen to what the teacher is teaching. You know, rest. Jesus used to, because we are, we are being taught to learn um, from Jesus. Jesus used to talk to God all the time. You see, find, when you wake up in the morning, read your Bible, pray, huh? communicate with your creator. He's the one, he's, he's called Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He knows the end and he also knows the beginning. He's the only one who knows the future. So just imagine if you had somebody who knew the future, who could tell you what is going to be happening during the day. Wouldn't you want to talk to him so that they can give you Mwakenya on how the day is going to go and save you a lot of stress? So if you do that in the morning, you have that opportunity for God to speak to you. For him to give you light burdens. You know, you will not go during the day being anxious or being stressed or being um, unsure of what is going to happen because God would have told you. Hmm? So learn from Jesus. Do what he's been doing. You know, rest. Talk to people. You know, do that which is important. Huh? And, 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 and as you do those important things, you will find that your life is more productive. As I said, Paul said, everything is permissible, but not all is profitable. It's about time we draw the line huh? and find that which is important and we begin doing it rather than doing everything else that is not important. And with that, I like to pray for you and as, as I pray for myself. Lord, I thank you for your word. And I pray that, Lord, as we are learning through this sermon series, we learn how to draw the line on things that are not important so that we may be able to do the things that are important. I pray that, Lord, we will begin to trust our lives with you that we will come to jesus who will take away all the heavy burdens that we have and he will give us burdens that are light i pray that lord we will do the things that you've called us to do O oh lord that before we do anything lord we will come to you we'll pray and give thanks that um we will deal with the things that have been causing stress stress and overload in our lives heavenly father not giving us peace and that lord we will learn from you we will do the things that are that are important that you tell us to do oh lord king that we will study hard we will obey our parents and that lord um we will find uh we will get to the point where by we get to spend our time well oh lord doing the things that you've called us to do because that's your will for us i thank you lord and i worship you and i pray that lord you will help us become better children um who please you oh lord and do the things that you've called us to do i thank you and i worship you for it is in jesus name we do pray and believe Amen. And now children, just before we join the music team as we sing this declaration song, it is our second Sunday of this month and you know what happens? We have communion together. I believe that you had your uh, elements ready. Do you have them? If not, go ahead and get them. Okay. I believe now you have them. And... This is what the word of God says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 24. Actually, allow me to read from verse 23. It says, For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And he said, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We've learned from the sermon series that we need to learn from Jesus. Because he is our helper. He's the one who teaches us how to live life. And, and, to, and, and better yet, today as we are taking communion, we are to remember that 
we are part of his body we are with him and he is with us and when we take this communion it reminds us of our partnership and union with him amen and that's why he takes he tells us to take it with him so if you have your bread take your bread And it says this, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper and saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, as I said, Jesus has committed himself to us. And when we take this cup, we remember of that commitment he did with his blood. Always know that you can go to Jesus for anything and everything. When you feel that you are stressed and things are getting tough and hard, you know that you can go to Jesus. This is the covenant. This is the new agreement that he has with you, that he is always going to be with you and he will be for you. So when we take this cup, he's asked us to remember that. So let us take the cup. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you because, Lord, you love us so much. Lord Jesus, you love us so much. And you've told us, Lord, that we should take communion to remember how much you love us, how much you are for us, and that, Lord, you are always with us. And, Lord, I pray that we will not forget it. I thank you and I worship you, for it is in Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. And children, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to join the music team as they lead us in this song of declaration.
to invite you and give you the opportunity to worship the Lord with your giving. All of the details on how you can give are on your screen right now. There are several ways in which you can give here at ICC Mombasa. If you are giving through M-Pesa, our pay bill number is 488508. And for account, you write offering or tithe or special offering or fast fruits or whatever it is that you are giving towards. You can send an RTGS or write a check to International Christian Center Mombasa. Our account number is 100,0-9233. And our account is domiciled at NCBA Bank. And finally, you can give through our website at iccmombasa.org. Simply click on the giving button and follow the instructions on the page. Thank you so much for your giving to the work of the Lord. God bless you. Yes, kids, we've had a wonderful time. We've had communion. Yes, we've sung, we've danced, we've given our money for Jesus. I hope you did that. You see, when Alice was talking. And now we've come to the end of our service. I'm wishing you guys a wonderful week. Remember the things that you're supposed to be doing. Before you change, you do what? You come to Jesus. Speak to him. Say thank you. You know, and also deal with your problem and believe as you do that you will begin living your life without a lot of stress and a lot of strife god bless you as you get into this week see you next sunday bye bye